Oh, uh, well, we started recording it, um, I think, at the uh, pretty early in the year last year. And so um, maybe, maybe March or something like that. So it was recorded over about a nine-month period. Um, I think we had hoped to get it out by Christmas, uh, but we ended up recording another two songs um, kind of late in the, in the game. And uh, I don't know if there was any special reason why it would have shown up um, on the schedule in a, in a way that was weird compared to how it normally would show up. But uh, that was kind of the theory was always to get it out, try to get it out by this end of this year. Yeah, Ticketmaster is a non-factor in, uh, in our lives. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, it didn't really affect the band in any dramatic way. I think we've struggled in terms of playing shows in certain cities that we want to play in in certain places. Um, but ultimately, uh, our fight with Ticketmaster was not, it was nothing more than one of the details of the day that we face as a band. I mean, we want to sell our tickets for a low price. We want to play uh, settings that um, are not uh, too cavernous and, 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 uh, and, and we feel the need to, you know, we, we control the security very closely and there's, uh, we, we sell t-shirts for um, as little as we can sell them for. So there's a lot of little elements and details and one of those things is ticket price and that's kind of where we ran into some problems with Ticketmaster. But as far as our supposed fight with Ticketmaster, that was like, that was a media created um, thing. The US government was investigating Ticketmaster to see whether they were a monopoly. They asked us to come and testify. Um, through that process, we became the poster boys for Ticketmaster and uh, everyone, uh, you know, imagined that it was our fight and we were, you know, going ag up against Goliath or something like that or, you know, whatever, whatever it was. Um, that's just a sidebar. That's not really a big factor in our... Um, well, I mean, we, we definitely wanted to testify and we definitely felt strongly that Ticketmaster was a monopoly. Um, the U.S. government found that they weren't a monopoly. They, they basically said that, that, that they weren't a monopoly. And that was kind of the end of the case. Um, we still haven't used Ticketmaster uh, for touring with Pearl Jam. And we'll do everything we can not to deal with them as a company. Because it's just our choice not to want to deal with them. Um, to deal with them as little as possible. There's some cities that ultimately for us to play in there's a chance we may use Ticketmaster just because it's the only choice and uh, and really it's more important for us to play a show than just to kind of uh, you know to keep this you know uh, to save face so um, I don't know that's all I can imagine saying about Ticketmaster I, I don't know if that covers what you were looking for or not uh, I don't think about it too much I think uh, uh, that music and 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 businesses uh, and the combination of those two things uh, take their own course in terms of uh, they vacillate up and down. Uh, different s kinds of music becomes uh, more popular. Um, uh, new kinds of music sort of uh, happen and people get excited about it. But that's just a constant sort of very natural process. So I don't think I don't think about that kind of stuff too much. You know, I'm excited about what's going to make me excited musically, you know, just by buying records, you know, whether it's, you know, buying the new Bjork record or Supergrass or, you know, um, uh, whatever it is, local band here that I want to hear. But I don't, I don't think about the, the scene so much, I don't think. I, I think um, Ed definitely got recognized about 90% more than anyone. He probably got hassled more than anyone and probably was the least able to deal with it um, of anyone. So I think he went through his own trials and tribulations about becoming famous and having his space on TV all the time. And uh, our way of dealing with that was just kind of not do press and not do videos for a long time. And it, it definitely was an effective way of, of uh, kind of bringing this situation back to a, a, a level where we could all deal with it. and. Uh, and it also kind of made us focus on what the real problems were within the band because uh, we didn't really have the media to blame anymore. And so there was a lot to be worked out within our own band and within our own relationships that we kind of, I think, at least have 
have begun to work through. So, uh, or all of them. I think that's I think that's the the reason why we use that is because it's it's a it's a word we see on sign in America all the time, and it basically means slow down. But it does mean to produce. It does mean to give in. It does mean sort of all those things. And sometimes you can look up at a sign and it tells you something. You know, you can see the same sign a million times and uh, it only says one thing to you and suddenly it, 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 actually, uh, it actually means something else. And uh, there's all kinds of little pieces of art like that, you know, in our modern world that you can just, you know, you can look at a million different ways. And uh, plus it's like free advertising, you know, because they got yield signs all over the place. So basically uh, constantly for the next six months. Uh, I think I think uh, that th this record reflects, you know, the the headspace of the band for sure. Um, I don't know whether it reflects it perfectly or you know whether it's a it's a really accurate reflection. But I would imagine that it does reflect that. And if and I think the band is in a state of mind that's a very positive state of mind, and it's it's excited about it, uh, a new record, and. Um, uh, I think in general is feeling um, uh, pretty excited about putting itself out and, and playing shows and and um, and uh, being a band. So that's that's fun and exciting to kind of be back in that headspace or to be in that headspace at all. I, I think that's I think that there's a feeling of that freshness. If anything, I, I think at the beginning of the band I was way more stressed out than I am now. So if anything, it's it's not even going back. It's it's just kind of a new sort of. Uh, I don't know. I think we've all just uh, we've gotten through a little of our own sort of. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, not midlife crises, but just a sort of natural growing up process where we kind of all ended up um, coming out on the other side and feeling um, pretty lucky and pretty fortunate to uh, be able to play music and. Um, and to still be a band and to still have people want to do interviews and, and even uh, to have people care about the band. So, um, and if any, I, I think our, we're, just, we're just excited about uh, the prospect of now going out and playing with that sort of uh, attitude and, and just playing these shows with the Stones and kind of uh, making this record just really um, sort of reaffirm that. So uh, that's kind of exciting. Uh, I think this band um, it, uh, puts a lot of pressure on itself to make good songs, and I think individually between ourselves, we really want to write songs. We uh, we really want to bring in something good that the band is going to like. That's a really satisfying. Um, uh, it's something that I think we all crave is to is to is to excite the other members of the band about some artistic thing that we bring in, you know, some musical thing. Um, as far as overt pressure about record sales, I don't think any more than usual um, um, in terms of like trying to make the record that's going to please everyone. We've never really been a band that's been able to do that. I think that we've just written songs that we like, and I think our tastes are in line with, you know, uh, I think it comes from you, but it also comes from your influences too. It's a combination. I mean, it's, it's finding. It's finding something you like in what you play. I mean, you sit down with a guitar and and uh, you put your hands in a place you haven't put them before. Or you strum it in a way that you haven't, you know, you know, and you just try to come up with something you like. It's it's like painting a picture or doing anything. It's like you, you you know, you draw a couple lines, and if you're if it, if it inspires you, then you draw some more, and you and you finish off what it is. But where that comes from, whether that just comes from inside of you or whether it's you know, mimicking things that you remember, who knows? I mean, wh you, who, I don't know where it comes from. I don't have, I don't claim to kind of know where it comes from. Um, so I just, I just write riffs and, and write songs that, uh, that, you know, I like, you know. As far as the inspiration of those songs, I'm not sure where that, where that gener is generated from. Well, I don't know, I don't know, like, lyrically, whether there's one particular song that's like, Super positive. I think that I think that there's a, there's a certain kind of uh, resolve to some of the lyrics, and there's a certain melancholy. But um, 
Let me think. I mean, I think like do the evolution is just a really s kind of s sarcastic, snide, funny. Uh, I don't think the topic of what it's like singing about is sort of positive. I think it's, but uh, as far as the funness of the song and the track, it's it's a fun song to listen to. It's a, it's a, it, it has silly qualities to it. Uh, ultimately, what it's talking about is not silly at all. Uh, well, I look forward to coming to Japan uh, as soon as we can. I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, uh, it'll be very exciting to come to Japan.